Okay, I have some diagrams up here. Notice the way that uh, I try to draw them so they all look the same, although they're not perfect by any means. I have the different colors so that you can see the reference angles uh, for each quadrant, but I also, what I'm key on here is that you're able to do degrees, radians, sines, and cosines. Because if you know degrees, radians, sines, and cosines, you'll be able to do tangents and secants and cosecants and cotangents and all the rest. So I'm going to start out here, I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to mark down the angles and degrees. So I'm going to start with zero degrees here, that's easy enough, right? Remember this is the unit circle. Now I'm going up, notice there's three jumps at 30. So I'm going up 30 here, which means this is 30 on this side, because these are the same size. This is 30 here, this is 30 here. So you can kind of do the idea of the reference angle here as well, but since you guys uh, typically do better going around the circle, I'm going to go, the first jump is 30, then you can see there's another 30 here, this would be 60, this is halfway in between. The green ones that are kind of like the diagonals, they're the ones that ends with the fives. All the other ones end with zeros. Straight up is 90. 30 more is 120. This is one that ends with 5. 15 more is 135. 15 more is 150. 180. That should be easy. 180, just like this should be easy. 270, like this should be easy. 360. Okay, now a jump of 30. 210. Jump of 15. 225. Jump of 15. 240. Then the 270. Jump of 30. 300. Jump of 15. 315. Jump of 15. 330 and then up to 360. Now, the degrees are probably the easiest ones to remember. It's a little tougher with the radians. We're going to try the radians next. Now, if all else fails, you can always remember that if you take a certain angle in degrees, let's say you have something in degrees and you want to change it in the radians, you multiply it by pi over 180. So if I have 210 degrees and I want to figure out what this is in radians, I multiply it times pi over 180. 210, or 30 goes into this uh, 6 times, 30 goes into this 7 times, this is 7 pi all over 6. So you can do that if you have to, it just takes a while. Better to try to memorize them if you can. So again, we start at 0, all the way around will be 2 pi this time. If it helps you, halfway around is pi. Half of the half is pi over 2. Half of the half over on this end, you're between pi and 2 pi, which is like 2 pi over 2 and 4 pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2. Now it's a little tougher, but all the pink ones end with 6, or have a denominator 6. This is 1 pi over 6. Next uh, jump, now 3 pi over 6 is up here. The, the next jump over here is 5 pi over 6. The next jump is 7 pi over 6. Notice all the prime numbers here. Well, 1's not prime, but the 5, the 7, then over to here. Uh, 11 pi over 6, if that helps you a little bit. All the green ones are the ones that have a denominator of 4. So these are all going to have denominators of 4. And they're all odd numbers. So this is 1 pi over 4. This is 3 pi over 4. This is 5 pi over 4. 1, 3, 5, this is 7 pi over 4. If you have another way of memorizing it, then stick with that. This next jump here is the pi over 3's. All these are going to have denominators that have, or fractions that have denominators that are threes. Okay? So this is 1 pi over 3. This is 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3 is pi. 4 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3. 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. So you can see you can divide it into jumps of pi over 3 or 60 degrees. Now remember, your quadrants and all students take calculus. So you can remember the signs, the S-I-G-N signs. They're all positive in the first, sines positive in the, in the second, but not cosine or tangent, tangent's positive in the third, but not sine or cosine, cosine's positive in the fourth, but not sine or tangent. So I'm going to do cosines next. This was degrees, this is radians, all right, and this is going to be all the cosines. Now, the cosines are the first numbers in the ordered pair. He's going to probably have you fill out a table that's going to look like this next to it. I'm just going to do the cosines first, so that'd be like the first numbers. So notice here, it starts out at 1, because this is 1, 0. The x value is a 1. 
and they get smaller because one's as big as the uh, sines and cosines can be. So this goes to square root of 3 over 2, to square root of 2 over 2, to square root of 1 over 2, a half, or a 0. Now, it just reverses, but remember, cosine is negative in the second quadrant. Sine's positive. Negative 1 half. Negative square root of 2 over 2. Negative square root of 3 over 2. Negative 1. 0 here, 0 here, if that helps you. Now, it's going to get bigger, but they're still negative. This is negative 1. This is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Negative square root of 2 over 2. Negative 1 half. 0. Now they go back to positive because cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So positive 1 half. Square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Look at the pink lines. You see how they have the same values? Look at the green lines. They have the same values or they have their opposites, I should say. The pink, uh, the purple lines. They have the same values or they have the opposites. There's a pattern. you got to remember the pattern. So this is for cosine here. This is for sine. All right, sine, remember this point here is uh, 1, 0. Sine's the y value. So this would be a 0 right here. It's like some dean comma, it's the y value in the ordered pair. So remember, when you have a square root of 3 over 2, you have a 1 half. It's like 1 half on the y. See how it's about halfway up? because this is a 1 right here. So it's 1 half, then the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2, the 1. Now remember, sine's positive, all students, sine's positive in the second, so it just reverses. Square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, and then back down here to 0. Then uh, you get all the negatives, so it's just the same numbers just reflected, and they're all negative. Negative 1 half, negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 3 over 2, Negative 1, negative square root of 3 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, negative 1 half. Now what I did when I memorized these is I made like a long table. And I had uh, degrees, I had radians, I had cosines, and I had sines. So I would do like 0, 0, cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. Then I'd have 30 degrees, I had pi over 6. And then this is the square root of 3 over 2, this is uh, 1 half. And I looked at the patterns in the table from top to bottom. It's the same patterns, this is in a circle, this is in a nice row here, a nice column for you. Might be something that, you, uh, that might help you out there. Just writing them out again and again and again is going to help you to remember these. Alright, now don't forget the reference angle idea, I drew a couple more of them here. The reference angle is an acute angle that we can use to find trig values at corresponding angles. The corresponding angles to the acute angle, if the acute angle is alpha, it's 180 minus alpha, 180 plus alpha in the third quadrant, 360 minus alpha. So if this is 20, this is 180 minus 20s, 160. If this is 180 plus 20, 200. This is 360 minus 20, 340. Because they have either the same x values or the opposite x values and they have either the same y values or they have the opposite y values. So you can find the sines and the cosines, the cosines and the sines if you have the reference angle. So I don't think they're going to have you find the sines and cosines using the reference angle. They expect you to have all this memorized. But you need to be able to find the reference angle whether it's in degrees or over here in radians. Again, if alpha is my reference angle, this would be equivalent to pi minus alpha third quadrant pi plus alpha, fourth quadrant three, uh, 2 pi minus alpha, because you know pi and 180 degrees, 2 pi and 360 degrees are equivalences. So when you are trying to find a reference angle, make sure that the angle that they give you that you're trying to find the reference angle for is between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi. If it's not, if it's negative or if it's really big, you would add or subtract multiples of 360 or 2 pi until you get it to be between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi. Like here, this one's negative. I'm not going to do a negative. I'm going to add 360 to this. Negative 245 plus 360 is going to be 115. That's this angle, like this, 115. Well, in the second quadrant, and I'm doing degrees, in the second quadrant, it's 180 degrees minus my reference angle equals my angle, 115. 180 minus what is 115? Well, it's 65. You could subtract 180 and then take the opposite of both sides, you get 65 degrees. 
Here's another one with a negative, only this one is in uh, radians. So I'm going to add 2 pi to this. I'm going to take negative 5 pi over 8, and I'm going to add 2 pi to it, which is like 2 pi over 1. So my common denominator is 8. Don't, go, don't grab your calculator to do decimals. Multiply top and bottom by 8. This would give me 16 pi over 8. And if I add a negative 5 pi and a positive 16 pi, I get 11 pi all over 8. Well, that's this angle, this one right here. That puts me in the third quadrant. Remember, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. you got to be able to determine if the angles are in between those values. It's like between 0, or well, degree-wise, between 0, 90, 90, 180, and so on. So this is 11 pi over 8. I have a picture. I can tell it's in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, right there, it's pi plus my reference angle that equals the angle in question. So I subtract pi from both sides. And I get 11 pi over 8 minus pi over 1, which would be the same as 8 pi over 8, getting a common denominator. That's 3 pi over 8. Oops, 3 pi over 8. Again, don't grab a calculator and do it that way. Now in this case, they don't have the drawing there, so you have to determine what quadrant it's in. So if it helps you draw yourself a little set of axes like this. This is positive, so I go counterclockwise. That's 90, 180, 270, and a little bit more, 340. So it would be in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus alpha is equal to 340. Well, I can tell you right now, alpha better be 20 degrees. That's my reference angle. That's this acute angle right there. Now I have 9 pi over 8. This is a little tougher because you're used to degrees and not maybe quite as used to radians. But 9 pi over 8, remember over here? It goes from 0 to pi over 2 to pi to 3 pi over 2 to uh, 2 pi. Well, 9 divided by 8 is 1.125 pi. So it's a little bit bigger than 1 pi, but not big enough to be 1 and a half pi, which is what this is. So it's in the third quadrant. And if it's in the third quadrant, my reference angle is pi plus reference angle is equal to 9 pi over 8. So I subtract pi, and I get 9 pi over 8 minus, well this would be like pi over 1, multiply top and bottom by 8, I get 9 pi over 8 minus 8 pi over 8, which is pi over 8. And I found the reference angles. Now, you need to know your table, and you need to go uh, get your notebook out and look at the assignment from a couple, of, uh, a couple days ago that had you looking up reference angles. Look at the examples that are in your, the, you know, you can check the notes and such, but look at uh, the worksheet that's not already worked out do it on separate paper and check your answers. Yeah, do every other problem. You don't have to do them all. Just do them until you feel comfortable. This type with the diagram, this type without the diagram. The positives, the negatives, the degrees, the radians. Try one or two of each to make sure. It won't kill you to practice this stuff so it sticks in your head for, uh, for any kind of a quiz that you might have tomorrow. All right? So I'm going to show you just a little bit more in, in one more video. But this should be a chunk of what you're doing. This is really the key. Because if you can draw out, because he's going to give you a blank unit circle. And he's going to ask for you to fill it out. That's why you practice those ones. I gave you all those practice uh, uh, templates, and those uh, 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 worksheets that have them all blank. And you just practice, try to do as much from memory. And then go back and look in and fill in. Then try it again. So you see if you can get more the next time. As you, as you continue to do them, you're going to get more and more of them until you can get the pattern down. If you have them all memorized, great. If you can do the pattern and write it down, then you can look off of the unit circle to answer the problems, such as problems involving sines and cosines, which I haven't gotten to. This is all stuff before the sines and the cosines. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to make one more quick video here, but you can start uh, uh, making sure that you know these kinds of problems. Practice some out of the uh, out of the uh, worksheets that you received from before. All right, one more.